fact, there's a there's a very nice old story about the king, the king of uh, of England, who was involved in a huge battle, and after the battle, they were looking for his body and couldn't find it. But he had a mistress, and his mistress had her name tattooed across his chest. And when they found a particular body and removed the armor after she pointed it out, she broke down in tears because she recognized that this was the king of England. So it was a way of marking people during the wars, and it was actually very much encouraged. Gray is the hardest part in tattooing. The Japanese takes five years of indoor staying, sleeping in the needles, they call it, to learn how to do their grays. And tattooing is nothing more uh, that strange pigments invade your body, and it's and it here goes like alert, and they send the troops and they capsule the thing, they cap it so to keep it at at this place, and then slowly it sort of like moves out. Gravity takes over and is, is pulling the uh, uh, on it and pulls it apart. So let so like you see, all black and gray, if it's too too close to each other, also sort of moves into one. It it needs to have like a certain percentage of, of different black, and then it works. So to master that kind of stuff is extremely difficult. And that developed, and, and now with these new kids, I mean, it's really a Jack Rudy and, and it's Charlie Cartwright and an Ed Hardy thing who, where this came from. Ed Hardy is the man who led us into the renaissance of tattooing. You know, it's like, I have no idea who that is, but I thought I knew him at one time, so... I don't know. Man.